Hi, I'm 8-Pack and I'm here to introduce to you the new X299 overclock bundles and X299 pre-bin CPUs available now at OCUK. So initially let's talk about the pre-bin CPUs. We have i9-7900X available up to 4.9, i9 7800X available also up to 4.9. In the i7 range we've got 7740X available up to 5.3 GHz. Well initially let's discuss a little bit about the pre-binning process. Uh, what we're doing basically by pre-binning is making sure the customer gets the frequency out of the CPU, the CPU that they require for the task or if they want to just go a little bit faster and want ultimate stability. And what we're doing is removing the silicon lottery by pre-testing for the customer and doing everything we can that, to make sure that they get the right product for their usage. So how do we pre-bin? What we do is take a lot of uh, CPUs from our system stocks and test them at a given voltage for the i9 and i7 1.25 to 1.3 volts and check that it can pass non-AVX prime and real bench for 15 to 30 minutes on both. This gives us a really good guide of what bin to put them in uh, and obviously we, we improve the, the stability of the CPU then by improving its thermals. How do we do this? We do something known as delidding, which I'll just explain in a second. The limitations obviously with any CPU in terms of its lifespan are temperature and voltage. So with overclocking we are increasing the voltage slightly, although keeping it within a perfectly reasonable range of 1.3 or below. But also we're keeping the temperatures totally in check. i9 are known for being quite hot CPUs and as are i7 on the X299. So we're dealing with that by this delidding process. Okay, let's go now into what delidding is. Here I have uh, a completely completely stock CPU with the IHS on uh, and the PCB there. Now the problem with the with the CPU as it is now in terms of uh, thermals when you're uh, overclocking uh, and when you're adding voltage is that the tin between the CPU here, uh, the CPU PCB here and the IHS is a polymer tin and it's much better to use a liquid metal tin. So that's what we're essentially doing by delidding. This is the i9 CPU here, uh, without the without the IHS on here. Now you'll know on, on here on the IHS we've removed the old glue what Intel had put on there to hold the CPU in place. Uh, so we've re removed that on the IHS, but we haven't removed it on the CPU. But what we have done is replaced the actual tin there with the, sh the shiner liquid metal which, which gives a much better contact. Now on the i9 variant we don't remove all the glue because uh, the SMDs here are very close to the, to the glue area itself and if you get the IHS even slightly out you can cause damage to the CPU. So by leaving the glue on we know exactly how the orientation of the IHS should go. And through testing this has given us still great results through the lidding. We've seen like 15 degree uh, lower temps under load and I'll show you that on the screen a little bit later. Okay so that's the i9. With the i7, this is a 7740K which I mentioned we can uh, do binning all the way up to 5.3. As you can see we've removed the or most of the old glue on the actual CPU uh, PCB itself there as well as on the IHS before we replaced it uh, with liquid metal and then silicon it back down. Okay. So what then are the results of this deal lid in? Let's quickly have a look on the screen here. First the 7740X, well, let's check the temperatures. So with no delayed, we notice that uh, the CPU at 5.1 gigahertz, 4.2 on the cache, 1600, CL14 on the memory, is, is, is maxing out at around 86 degrees C, and this is under like an hour of non-AVX prime load. So it's maxing out at 86 degrees C. Here the voltage is 1.25, 1.26, CPU Z is re reading incorrectly. If we check the actual daily temperatures at 1.3 volts, we've got the CPU maxing out still at 5.1, maxing out at 73 degrees. So basically we've served ourselves 13 degrees C there, 
This is running at 1.3 and the previous screenshot was at 1.25. So we've got a bit more voltage headroom for actually overclocking the CPU and we're still saving quite a lot of temperatures. So what you can expect from our delivered CPUs is around 13 or what we say normally is 10 to 15 degrees uh, for, for the same voltage and same stress test. This is again at like an hour or so running of the uh, non-AVX Prime. Over onto the i9 now, the non-delay 1.26 volts, 4.8 gigahertz, we're maxing out at about 92 degrees, which is quite a high temperature really. On this one we've got the motherboard frequency at stock and the MEMS at 3200. So our top temperature there is 92. In the delivered uh, CPU, which is one, at 1.28 volts, we've got a maximum temperature if we check all the cores of 76. So we've improved our temperature on the i9, even though we've left the glue in place uh, to ensure orientation of around 16 degrees. And again, on the i9, we're finding with delidin because of the amount of cores and cache involved, we're saving even more uh, overall heat than on the i7. We're saving normally on this one between like 13 and 20 degrees. And what you've seen here is a 16 degree drop. And obviously I tried real bench as well on that. And again, the maximum temperature was also 76, 1.28 volts and so on and so on. So that's basically covering our pre-bin processors. What you can expect is a processor that's stable in the advertised uh, frequency. And that's also between 13 and 15, sort of 20 degrees at the most cooler than what you'd expect from something with a stock tin. Obviously the full warranty is in place given by OCUK because we modded the CPUs ourselves. Um, those CPUs, obviously if you're an avid overclocker, what I've showed there is XMP memory uh, and, and the standard cache frequency. But what you find on, on usually on the bin CPUs is the i7, you can push the cache anywhere up to five gigahertz, but all can do 4.7 gigahertz from the stock 4.2 gigahertz. On the i9, the cache can be pushed from the stock uh, 2.7 to 3 gigahertz, 3.1 or in some cases 3.2 no problem. On the Strix motherboard here uh, on the i9, the memory if you're using a decent Samsung uh, B dial like the Dark Pro 8 pack edition you can easily push uh, 3733 megahertz as well as high cache and frequency. On the i7 you can push uh, 3933 or 3866 megahertz on the memory as well as 5 gig on the cache and 5.2, 5.3, whatever you paid from the binner CPU. A lot of reviewers, when they're reviewing CPUs, uh, just overclock the core. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, the enthusiast wants to overclock everything, and these CPUs I've tested it many times with different uh, configurations. I found that high cache uh, and high memory speed is also improving the efficiency of clock for clock, and that's what people who are trying to max out performance wants. So, that's all really for the bin CPUs. If you have any questions, hit me up on the forums for that, or obviously check the website to actually, to actually buy them. Now let's move on to the bundles. Here we have uh, the 8-pack Elite Tier X299, i9 and i7 bundles, basically. We've got it set up here. Uh, what I've chosen for this bundle is, um, if you choose the i7 CPU, you'll get a uh, uh, 240 AIO cooler, which is the minimum requ required to keep this and any uh, i7 X299 CPU cool. If you choose the i9, then you'll get uh, the triplet AIO cooler, which is also the minimum recommended cooler for the bin CPUs, which uh, are i9, because they are putting out a, a lot of TDP. Yes, the delivery is efficient, but you still need somewhere to actually exhaust all this extra heat, and that's where the quality of cooler comes in. So we have the uh, eight pack AIO cooler. We have four in this uh, i9 configuration quad channel, 32 gigabytes uh, of eight pack uh, CL14, 32 mega, 3200 megahertz memory. And then basically it's up to the customer. We're assembling the bundles here. In fact, I'm assembling them and overclocking them myself. So I'll max out the CPU to the frequency that the customer chooses. I'll max out the cache and the memory for them, no problem. So all the overclocking is done by us. So what I'll uh, now show is the performance of this particular bundle on the Strix Asus board, which is one that I chose because uh, it's very stable and very compatible and also very efficient clock for clock and great at pushing the memory high. So let's see now some performance figures. 
on the 7740X bundle. Uh, in real bench, you can expect 175,200, and that was with the CPU at 5.2, motherboard frequency at 5 gig, and the memory at XMP. So a bit more could be eked out of that score if we go higher on the memory. This is the Valley score, so you're gaming. On this, I used uh, a 980 Ti GPU. So I recognize that with this type of bundle, people are gonna pair, pair the bundle with a 1070 or above from the NVIDIA uh, range, or a 570 or above from the AMD range. So I used the comparable GPU to the 1070. And we're talking like 99.7, almost 100 frames per second on the Extreme HD pre preset at 5.2 with five gig cache. CL14 3200 mems. And finally, let's check our Cinebench score, which checks the multi threading performance of the bundle. And we have 1165, again with 5.25 5 gig 3200 on the mems. All very, very strong scores, and especially the, the frame rate on the gaming style test, which is uh, Heaven Valley, shows great frame rates. And obviously, this bundle is, is the king of IPC. It's looking to push single core to stroke quad-core gaming performance through the roof. Also here, I did a, a quick memory testing to show that the bundle is totally capable of running 5.2 and very high memory. With all the memory, 100% stable with full coverage. Okay, so that's our i7 bundle and the performance. Now let's check the i9 bundle performance. So the performance of this we see in our R15 or Cinebench R15. multi threading performance, we've got a score of 1608, which is an excellent score. CPU at 4.9, motherboard frequency at 3.1, uh, and memory 1600 or 3200 CL14. So that's the XMP of the memory, what everyone can totally achieve. Here's the real bench performance. Um, this time we're up to 190k, uh, 4.9 CPU. 3.1 uh, cache frequency and again 3200 CL14 and finally our valley performance we're at 99.1 FPS 4.9 CPU 3.1 cache and then our memory was at uh, XMP which is 3200 CL14 so again this was again with the TI GPU because uh, you know very similar performance to 1070 and I believe that anyone choosing this bundle is going to choose 1070, 1080, 1080 Ti or 570 above on the AMD range and that's what I'd recommend you know uh, to push to push uh, the GPU you need this kind of uh, CPU power. Finally again I just did a quick uh, mem test a 32 gig this time in quad channel uh, 3733 on the mother, the Strix motherboard was no problem with the motherboard frequency at 3 gig, uh, CPU at 4.9. And like I say, these bundles uh, are overclocked by myself. They're called 8 pack elite tier. And what I'm doing when I'm overclocking is maxing out the CPU to the frequency that you choose. So you get a bin CPU, choose that frequency. I'm then also going to max out the memory, uh, mem test stable uh, for at least 100%, but hopefully longer. Uh, on the memory and then max out the cache as well all at the same time so you get the absolute optimum performance buying a pre-assembled bundle from OCUK. Obviously to buy the bundles or if you have any questions uh, hit up the forums. To buy the bundle sorry go to Overclockers UK website uh, they're under pre-overclock bundles and that's about all from me. Thanks for watching.